What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be ranking all of the ghost face kills from Screams 1 through 5. Now, at the time of recording, Scream 6 is just about to come out and I can't wait for that movie. So I thought this would be the perfect time to go through all the kills that Ghostface does. Uh, not including any uh, Ghostface killers that get killed, just the victims of Ghostface. Um, we're going to go through them. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do. And let's get into ranking these kills. The following content does contain spoilers, so if you wish to avoid being spoiled, please watch the original content and then come back to the video. So at number 37, we've got Deputy Clay. <gasps> now, there's nothing to say about this. The man is dead on the floor. That, that's, that's it. Number 36. Hello? Marnie, who is this? This is the last person you're ever going to see alive. We have Marnie Cooper. Now, she's um, an opening uh, scene kill. She's not really featured that much, and it's an off-screen kill. So, for me, automatically, it falls near the bottom. Because even though there's some other kills that I've ranked a bit high up the list that may have an off-screen element to them, there's still a lot of um, a lot of what happens around the kill on screen, but with Marnie, she answers the phone and then she's dead. Next time you see her. What did you do with Marnie? She's on the cutting room floor. That's not funny. This isn't a comedy. It's a horror film. People live, people die, and you better start running. Uh, she's killed off screen, so she's automatically ranked really low, unfortunately, on this list. But, you know, we've, we've got to have those low-ranked kills. And I feel like the off-screen kills belong at the bottom of the list. Now, with some of the kills that are further up, there's off-screen elements to them. But I just feel like with this one, it's very much a matter of the entire kill is off-screen. Because there's more build-up to some of the ones that I've put higher up the list. But this one is all off-screen. The next time you see she's already dead if she comes crashing through the window. It's just it's just not a great kill because we don't see anything number 35 his name wouldn't be steve would it yes mr ghostface yes it is so with steve he's he's at the mercy of of casey really so his girlfriend casey for those of you who haven't seen the movies um he's coming around to see her Ghostface intercepts Steve outside the house, ties him up to a chair, and Casey has to answer the questions. Name the killer in Halloween. <laughs> now, it's a great kill, but it's partially off screen. And I said some high ranking kills are on screen, off screen, but a lot of Steve is off screen. You see him in the chair alive, and then you see him in the chair dead with his guts hanging out, which is great. It's a great visual, but. There's not enough of him on screen for me to rank him higher on this list, unfortunately. Um, but it's a great kill. Like His insides are on the outside. What more can you ask for from a great kill? But you just don't see it. You don't see him getting gutted, uh, which is unfortunate. But it's, it's still, you know, he's not at the bottom. There was a time he was at the bottom of this list. Thanks to Screams 4 and 5, he's no longer at the bottom of my list. He's now moved up, so... There's always a, an opportunity for everyone on this list to move up, especially with Scream 6 coming out. Uh, but that's enough of that. Let's move on to the next one. Number 34, Randy Meeks. Great character. And it pains me, it really pains me to put him this low down the list. However, Randy is one of those characters that unfortunately fell victim to an off-screen death. Now, some people might disagree that it's off-screen, but for me, the the scene tells the story. You wanna be one of the big boys? Huh? Manson? Bundy? OJ? 
He's, he gets pulled into the back of the news van and the next time you see him, he's dead. The van's shaking, but you don't see the, the kill. Like, you see briefly Ghostface raise the knife and plunge it into Randy. But outside of that, you don't really see the kill. Um, I hate putting Randy this low down the list, but remember, this is based on the kills of the characters, not the characters themselves. Otherwise, Randy would be much higher up the list. But Randy just fell victim to an off-screen kill. And that's a travesty. A character like Randy Meeks does not deserve an off-screen kill. So, for me, he ranks quite low. But it's with a heavy heart. I don't want to put him this low down. But it's just... Off-screen kills, they've got to be lower down the list. And there's not enough build-up. You see Randy talking on the phone with Ghostface. But then into the van he goes. And then the next time you see him, he's just dead. And it's it's unfortunate. It is. But Randy, as a character, great character. Phenomenal character. Um, it's just It's just not a great kill, unfortunately. Number 33. So we have Principal Himbry. Um, it's too cartoonish for me, in a, in a way. Uh, I feel like Principal Himbry is... Like the build-up to it is, is, is entertaining. Um, jump scares himself a couple of times. Uh, you've got the aspect of uh, the janitor named Fred, dressed as Freddy Krueger. Damn little shits! Would you call me? Huh? Not you, Fred. It's it, it's funny. It works. It goes together. But then, as he closes the door and Ghostface is behind him, it's just too cartoony. Ghostface with his arms in the air, the the stabbing, the the reaction from Himbury is just, it's not, he it doesn't sell it. It's not believable for me. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Again, this is an on screen kill with a slight off screen aspect because you don't see the final blow because you can see the reflection of Ghostface in Himbury's eyes. But it was just a bit too cartoonish for me. And for that reason, Principal Himbury, I'm afraid you come in at number 33. Number 32. We have Angelina Tyler. Now, Angelina um, plays Sydney in Stab. In Stab 3, to be precise. Uh, Angelina, she runs down the stairs and runs straight into Ghostface. Um, again, off-screen element. You see her get stabbed. Uh, Gail and Jennifer, who are at the top of the stairs. Jennifer is the actress that portrays Gail in Stab. And you see her looking up at them and get dragged away. I feel like this this should have been a bit more to the kill there, um, but again, I feel like because I don't, I feel like one stab would have done it. So again, I feel like there's a bit more to the kill than what we actually see on screen. It's it it could be better, but because she just runs down the stairs and runs straight into Ghostface, uh, there's no struggle, there's no fight, there's no chase, there's just nothing really to to make this kill stand out. And I rank it higher than him, Principal Himbry just because it's less cartoony. But again, a lot of it is off screen. And I feel like if there was more of it on screen, this might have got, a, you know, might have got a higher rating. But uh, I'm going to put Angelina in at number 32. And let's go on to number 31. So at number 31, we have Hallie, Sydney's best friend in Scream 2. Uh, she's unfortunate to be Sydney's best friend. That's the only reason she dies, let's face it. Um, no, the, the scene, the build-up to uh, Hallie's kill is great. The The suspense behind it is great. Uh, you have the moment where they're climbing out of the car because they're trapped. Uh, they're desperate to get away, but then Sydney stops. And it's Sydney's fault that Hallie dies, because Sydney stops. And... I want to know who it is. Oh no, come on, Sid, come on, please, let's just back. go. Look, look, stupid people go back, okay, smart people she run. She goes and checks to see who Ghostface is whilst he's unconscious, just to find, naturally, that he's disappeared. He's not there, and uh, when she, when Sydney relays this to Hallie, 
Holly's confused. He's gone. What? Ghostface jumps out, stabs her. She's done. Um, I just the the build up was better than the kill, so that is the reason why I'm gonna rank Halle at number thirty one, just because the kill is not as good as the build up, and I felt like the build up deserved a better kill. Um, it's I, I think it's meant to be a jump scare. Yeah, it, it just falls flat for me, uh, unfortunately. So Halle, you are at number thirty one. Moving on to number thirty. So at number 30, we have Jennifer Jolie. So, as I mentioned previously, she is the actress who portrays Gail Weathers in Stab 3. Uh, with Jennifer, she is very much uh, an annoying character. Um, I think we're all glad when she gets killed. But um, there's, again, that off-screen element. I keep saying it, but there is that off-screen element. You see Ghostface approaching her behind the mirror. Um, she can see Dewey and Gail on the other side. Uh, she's screaming for Dewey, but uh, Dewey can't hear her. But he does see the mirror moving, which alerts him to the fact that Jennifer's there. Uh, the only downfall is because the camera keeps panning between Jennifer and Dewey, um, you only see parts of the kill. That's why I say it as an off-screen element. But uh, by the time Dewey is done shooting all the mirrors, Jennifer falls through and uh, she's already dead at that point. So, um, yeah, it just, again... It's just missing that little extra something. Uh, so unfortunately, Jennifer, you get ranked quite low. Um, but, you know, these kills can only get better. Because we are going from worst to best. So these kills can only get better. Number 29. We saw Officer Andrews earlier on with Hallie. Um, just before Hallie's death, Officer Andrews falls victim to Ghostface. Um, he gets assaulted at the traffic lights. Uh, Ghostface times this kill perfectly. Turns into Super Ninja Ghostface. Um, he just slices the throat, and that's it for Officer Andrews. There's nothing particular. There's no, no particular build up to it. Ghostface just pops up out of nowhere, smashes the window, does the kill, and it, that's it. He's done. Um, yeah, there's there's not much really to say on this kill. But the difference between this and Deputy Clay, who we mentioned earlier, is at least this is on screen. Um, Deputy Clay, we found dead, so that's why he was just very much, he's dead, let's move on. Officer Andrews, you get to see the kill. So at least there's there's that aspect to it, which is why he's ranked much higher. And all in all, it could be better. His partner is much higher up the list, and I'm looking forward to getting to that. Because that's when we get to uh, at that point we will be getting much higher much higher up the list towards the better kills. Uh, at the moment, like I say, there's not much uh, element in really any of these kills, just because it might be that there's off screen elements to it or there's no build up. With this one, like I say, it's just no build up. Uh, Officer Andrews just falls victim to Ghostface at the traffic lights. It's unfortunate uh, for them that. The traffic light turned red, I suppose. Um, I don't know how Ghostface would have control over the traffic light, so it can't have been massively well planned. Uh, I wouldn't have thought anyway. But uh, yeah, traffic light turns red and Ghostface strikes. Uh, night, night, Officer Andrews. Coming in at number 28, we have Christine Hamilton. Now, Christine is Cotton Weary's girlfriend at the start of Scream 3. Um, Christine, just wrong place, wrong time. Uh, this kill just, I think because of the magic voice changer, it sets Christine up for a fall. Um, Cotton rushes in, gets assaulted with a golf club. He tries to warn Christine. She chooses not to listen. And that is the reason why she doesn't make it. Behind you! Um, Cotton warns Christine after getting smacked round the head with a golf club that a ghost face is there. And she doesn't listen. She gets stabbed in the back. And there's, just, there's not much more to say on that one, unfortunately. In at number 27, we have Kate Roberts. She is Jill's mother and Sydney's aunt from Scream 4. Uh, the sister of Maureen Prescott, who, as you will all know, for those of you that have seen the movie, these, uh, these Scream movies are heavily based upon. Um, because that was how the, the ghost face killing started. And... Kate is very much a secondary character. She's in the background for most of the movie. 
Uh, you don't really see much of her. Uh, she's not really a great loss uh, when she dies. And I just feel like the, the method of the kill is why this ranks as low as it does. Let's get out of here. Oh! Um, getting stabbed through the letterbox in the back. Uh, very precise uh, accuracy from Ghostface. He just, uh, yeah, it's just the, the method on this one, unfortunately, that I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. A knife through the letterbox into the back, it's just... I mean, there's no guarantee that anybody was going to be stood there. Um, but she was, and I just feel like any other way of killing her would have been better than the way that Ghostface does get this kill. But all in all... Um, like I say, Kate is no great loss um, when she's gone because she's a character that's an afterthought, in my opinion. She's just very much in the background. She doesn't need to be in the foreground, but she just, yeah, it, it's just wrong place, wrong time. She just happens to be the the mother of a ghost face killer. She just happens to be the aunt of a ghost face survivor who everybody wants to kill and the, the sister of another ghost face victim. So circumstance is what kills Kate Roberts in the end, but the method of the kill is just, it doesn't do it for me. Up next, we have Deputy Hoss. Now, Deputy Hoss, uh, unfortunately for him, his partner's kill is far superior, so he ranks much higher up the list. Um, Deputy Hoss is another one like Christine Hamilton. She gets sta He gets stabbed in the back, uh, very much like Christine did, and uh, there's not, not, nothing else to it. Um, Ghostface though the reason I rank this higher is because on this one Ghostface comes out the shadows very quickly gets the stab that's it uh, with Christine she, you know Ghostface was coming up behind her she had someone to warn her but with uh, Deputy Hoss Ghostface just comes out of the shadows in the darkness and he just delivers that, that fatal blow that stab to the back and he, he finishes Deputy Hoss off and it's for me, that particular scene gets better because of the next kill. Um, but that's a, a kill that is much higher up the list just because it's far more entertaining. But with Deputy Hoss, it is just a stab in the back. But like I say, he's ranked higher just purely on the basis that Ghostface comes out of the shadows. There's no warning for him. And uh, Ghostface just gets that kill. And what follows is just far superior but it's it's a you know it's a good kill it is a good kill just because he comes out of the shadows and nobody sees it coming but i feel like it could have been better if he'd have chose to maybe slice uh, grab pull him back and slash his throat or something you know it's the stab in the back that ranks it so low but the kill itself is is actually quite good because of the fact that he just comes out of the shadows and there's no warning and like i say with the kill that follows in the movie is so so much better than this kill but it's uh, very much a matter of ghostface just trying to quickly remove the officers from outside the house which he does a spectacular job of but again deputy hoss unfortunately you got to rank low just purely because of the method of the kill but the surrounding of the kill and the kill that follows are, are great so for that reason that's why you've ranked as high as you have ahead of christine um yeah uh all in all it's it's not a terrible kill it's just the the, the method of the kill which is just a stab to the back uh we've seen other characters that have survived far worse um some of those characters we're going to be discussing later on in the video up next we have number 25 which is derek feldman derek is uh, sydney's boyfriend from scream 2 now with derek he very much has no chance of surviving Ghostface. Derek gives his Greek letters to Sydney, and for that he gets tied up and you know lifted above a stage, which then later on he gets lowered on and he's just prime Ghostface target. You know he can't run away, and we have the reveal of one of the Ghostface killers, which is Mickey, and Mickey just shoots him in the chest. <laughs> And, you know, there's not, nothing else, really, that he can uh, 
that he can do. So he does just, he just happens to fall victim to circumstance more than anything. Um, he gave Sydney his Greek letters because of the ghost face attacks, but because of the the result of that, he becomes a perfect target because he can't move. He's tied up, and then Ghostface just uh, just shoots him in the chest, and that that's it, Derek. Uh, unfortunately, there's not much else to your kill. So for that reason, he is going to rank in at number twenty five. It's slightly better um, because of the reveal of Ghostface around that kill. Um, it's just he's better than the other kills that we've had so far. I feel. That's the only reason he's ranked as high as he has, because the other kills that have preceded it have just not been that great. Uh, but we are getting up towards the good stuff soon. Um, like I say, we've just got to have the stuff at the bottom of the list. It's not that they're bad kills, not all of them, not necessarily. They're just missing something. Or there's some kind of circumstance that just is unavoidable for them to die. Um, like with Derek here, he's tied up. He can't do anything to stop Mickey shooting him in the chest. So for that reason, he is at number 25. Let's move on. Let's get into number 24. Number 24, we have Sarah Darling. Um, she's, unfortunately for her, in Stab 3. Um, with Stab 3, everyone, all the cast are available for being killed. Because Roman is the director. Roman is the ghost face killer. Roman has the script. And Roman wants to kill them in the order they die in the movie. And that's why Sarah dies. Um, she's unfortunate that she finds herself in a prop room. Uh, she tries. She does try to defend herself. So that's why I've put her as high as I have. Um, on the basis that she does try to defend herself. But she tries to descend, defend herself with a room full of props. Those props very quickly become obsolete. Ghostface is very real. He's got a very real knife. And all Sarah has to defend herself with is stuff that's made of wood. or Not even wood, it's made of cardboard. Um, she, she's just got nothing to defend herself with. And on that basis, she gets killed because she can't defend herself. Uh, the kill itself isn't spectacular. However, uh, the fact that she does actually have an opportunity to defend herself. Whereas some of these other kills that we've already covered in this video, the killer didn't necessarily have that opportunity. Um, so for that reason, she does rank in, uh, at number 24, which is quite strong for Sarah Darling because of the fact that she fails to defend herself. Obviously that's why she's made the list, but she has the, uh, the unfortunate, um, I mean, for her, it was great that she got this role in, in stab three, but it just, it, it meant she had to die. So for that reason, Sarah, you are at number 24 and let's move on again. Let's do number 23. John Milton, the horror producer. At number 23, he's... Uh, again, he's someone who isn't able to defend himself. Now, I said on the last kill with Sarah that she was able to defend herself. That's why she rates so high. The reason why John Milton outranks her on that basis that he's tied up is very much the the dialogue that goes around this kill um i actually quite enjoy the lines uh, involved in this kill um the one line in particular from milton and one from roman just worked perfectly what can't hear you you don't have to do this roman just tell me what you want i can make it happen any picture name your budget script approval final cut i already have it and that's it for john milton he's dead uh you know, he uh, he had very few scenes, very much like Kate Roberts, who we discussed earlier in the video. Uh, he just, he ranks this high purely because of the dialogue that goes with the kill for me. Um, a lot of the other kills we've already covered, not great dialogue, um, if any. So I feel like that's the reason why Milton's come in so high. Uh, other than that, it's... Uh, very standard kill. Um, could have been higher if there was more to it. But like I say, he's tied up. There's not a lot he can do to save himself. Uh, that's the only reason he hasn't ranked any higher. Uh, but the dialogue is what has got John Milton to the position he is on the list. Um, all in all, you know, 
a lot of people uh, in this movie do get their, their throat slashed. Um, it's just unfortunate for Milton. Uh, Milton does bring it on himself, though. Um, we, we find out a bit of backstory uh, surrounding Maureen Prescott. And uh, with Maureen, she um, was an actress in Hollywood when she was much younger. Um, she ended up having uh, having Roman, the, the ghost face killer. But it was because of John Milton that that happened. Uh, you need to see the movie to get the full, um, full backstory there. I'm not going to go right into it. But uh, yeah, the, the reason why Milton falls victim to Roman is because of what he allowed to happen, what he arranged to happen in his mansion. And uh, because of Maureen um, being in Hollywood in the first place, that's what led to all of this. All these people died because of John Milton, essentially, because of what he did to Maureen Prescott. And then because of the events that happened with Maureen Prescott, Roman was born, Roman started the whole thing off. In Scream 5, we do get a brief moment where Sydney says this all started because of Billy Loomis. We do know that all of these events happened because of Roman Bridger. And uh, Sydney incorrectly identifies Billy as the reason for all this when correcting Gale in Scream 5. But we all know Roman Bridger was responsible which is what brings us um, to all these kills, uh, essentially, because without any of this happening, Ghostface wouldn't have started because it was all the brainchild of Roman. He even says himself, A director said. A direct. And now let's jump in to the next kill on the list. I am not the girl you cheat on. <laughs> you shouldn't have cheated, Trevor. You should not cheat it on Jill. You brought it on yourself. I mean, you weren't to know that Jill was a psychopathic killer, but, you know, I, I don't condone cheating. So, Trevor does bring this on himself, but at the same time, does he deserve what happened? Does he deserve to be killed for it? I'm not so sure. Um, but the reason he dies is because he cheats on Jill. That is the whole reason he dies. Um, and to be framed, of course. And unfortunately for Trevor, um, he doesn't rank too highly because he's tied up. We said this with John Milton. Um, Milton just, he couldn't defend himself because he's tied up. Trevor can't defend himself because he's tied up. Uh, the gruesomeness of this kill. I mean, the first time I saw this kill, in fact, every time I see this kill, um... Let's, let's face it, no man can watch this kill without flinching. Because I can't imagine anything more painful. I can't imagine anything more painful. But, immediately gets put out of his misery. Following the, the initial gunshot, which I'm not going to say too much because YouTube. Um, but, the, uh, the gunshot to the head puts him out of his misery. Good night, Trevor. And uh, there's not much else to really say on that one. So let's move up the list. Coming in at number 21, we have Tyson Fox. Oh, you now, Tyson, um, I've only ranked you so high because the surroundings to your kill are so comical. But outside of that, I don't think it's a great kill. I don't. But the build up to it, it just it's funny to me. And for that reason and that reason only, he's ranked this high. Um, I mean, I should probably have ranked him lower because it is based on the kills that we're doing this list. Uh, I just I struggle to rank him lower. And I feel like some of the other kills uh, very much lacked anything else around them. So that's why Tyson is rated so high on this list. But at the same time, Tyson just... There's, there's not enough going on there for him to rank any higher than he is. At the same time, Tyson could have very easily um, been a top-level kill. With the comedy that comes around his kill, with some of the lines that are delivered, if the kill had been better, he could have been way up there. However, the kill itself, the method of the kill, just... There's other kills that are a similar method that rank higher just because there's more to them. 
with Tyson. It's just the comedy that's the extra. And it's not a comedy. It's a horror movie. So for that reason, Tyson Fox, you are number 21. And let's move into the next one. Number 20, Stephen Stone. Now, Stephen Stone is the bodyguard of Jennifer from Scream 3. Um, again, he doesn't have much to do, uh, sort of scenes-wise, uh, before he meets that untimely death from Ghostface. But the great thing about Stephen Stone is the slapstick uh, comedy that is involved in his kill when he gets hit in the face with a pan. Angry! Again, we're ranking um, comedy into this because of Tyson. We bumped Tyson up as high as we did. Uh, I just feel like with Stone, I mean, Stone and Tyson could, in theory, be the other way around. Um, upon doing this list, I'm actually thinking that would probably be the way to go. But we've already decided on the order. Um, we may do this again because, like I say, Scream 6 is right around the corner. And I can't wait for that movie. And when Scream 6 does come out, we'll have a whole new batch of kills that we need to put into this list. So we might do this again and move uh, some of the existing kills around uh, based on some of the Scream 6 kills. We just don't know. But Stephen Stone, um, he's under the impression that Dewey's the killer. And that's another reason why I've put him where I have. Because the magic voice changer, as uh, ridiculous as many people perceive that to be, uh, Stephen Stone dies genuinely believing that Dewey's the killer. Because um, the last person he spoke to on the phone before he got stabbed was Dewey, to his knowledge. Um, we know it's Ghostface, but Stephen Stone, the character, believes that Dewey is the one he was speaking to. And with his dying breath, with his dying, you know, the last bit of energy he has before he dies, he tries to tell everyone that Dewey is responsible. Um, so for that reason, that's why he's at the position he's at. It's not the, again, not the most spectacular of kills. However, the fact that he believes it to be Dewey and he has enough energy left in him to try and alert the others to the fact that Dewey is Ghostface, even though we obviously know he's not. Um, that's the reason why I feel like he belongs where he is on the list. But like I say, this could all change. Um, Scream 6, right around the corner, all of this could change. Uh, but for now, Stephen Stone, you are in at number 20. At number 19, we have Robbie Mercer. Robbie, your attempts to save your life, comical. Um, does Ghostface buy it? I don't think so. I know. You can't, you can't, there's rules. I, I, I'm gay, I'm gay. If it helps. Uh, Robbie Mercer, um, I feel like it's a bit along the lines of Principal Himbry. Quite cartoonish in the way that Ghostface tries to uh, attack Principal Himbry. Uh, no, uh, he tries to, the way he tries to attack Robbie. Um, it's very similar to how Principal Himbry was killed. Uh, I just feel like the comedy element to this just, you know, makes this much higher. The last few kills are based mostly on comedy, which, um, as Ghostface has quite rightly told us in the past, it's not a comedy. It's a horror film. People live, people die. But, Mr. Ghostface, I appreciate that it's not a comedy. However, Robbie Mercer, your attempt to save your life by pleading that you're gay is just humor. It's, it's, it's comical. It is. And for that reason, you have earned yourself a much higher place on the list than you probably should have. Um, Robbie is another character, though, that is in... If I'm comparing him to Principal Himbry, who is much lower down the list, we see much more of Robbie than we do with Principal Himbry. So for that reason, Robbie Mercer, you are on our Ghostface list because you were killed. And that's your position for now. Jenny Randall. Uh, she is one of these people I was referring to earlier when I said some people will have a much higher uh, position on the list, even though there's elements of off screen in their kill. Uh, with Jenny, she tries to put up a fight. Well, she tries to run away from Ghostface. 
she makes a foolish, foolish mistake by turning on the light uh, when she's hiding, which is what alerts Ghostface to her location. But um, it's the use of the garage door. Uh, she tries to escape through the garage door, very much like Tatum does in number one. Uh, but Ghostface puts a stop to that, uh, which she is on this list. We will get to Tatum shortly. But um, with Jenny, she tries to use the door to escape after being stabbed in the back. And Ghostface uses that against her. And that is the reason why I've put her as high as I have, because there's that extra element. You've got the chase scene. You've got the use of the garage door to stop jenny from escaping and then you've got the kill itself which um as ghostface brings that knife down to hit that final blow uh the camera cuts away um for the intro to the movie but uh for the reason that she's um she's killed in that scene uh the, it's, it's the surroundings behind it for me that rate her as high as it does uh, like i say there's the, the final element of the kill is off screen however the build up to it is sufficient enough for me to say that she belongs at number 18 so jenny randall enjoy your place at number 18 and uh let's move on to the next one next up we have tom prins now tom is an idiot he is for the reason he dies is because of himself he makes a stupid decision however it's a spectacular kill. It's the spectacle that gets the rating here. It's the way the house explodes. Um, it's not Ghost Ace's usual MO. However, the spectacle of the explosion is what I'm rating here. Um, the decisions made by Tom to go back into the house, to grab the page, to read it, um, to use a lighter to read it. He could have just taken it outside and used the moonlight. That natural moonlight would have been much brighter. It would have been surrounded by his friends. It would have been much safer. The reason they went out of the house in the first place was because they thought Ghostface was inside the house. So why would you go back inside the house on your own to read the next page of a script that Ghostface is feeding you? It's just stupidity. And then he doesn't take it back outside. I mean, it's circumstance. It's it's opportunity. Um, there's no guarantee that Ghostface is going to get this kill. So he's turned the gas on. He doesn't know that some... Yeah, it's dark. He's hoping someone is maybe going to use a lighter to be able to see. Or a candle or something. But it's... There's no guarantee behind it. And like I say, if Tom just went back outside to his friends and used the moonlight to read the page, which would have been far safer because they thought Ghostface was inside the house, it would have potentially uh, would have saved his life because the house wouldn't have exploded. But the spectacle of the house exploding is what gets Tommy's place on this list as high as he is. Um, there's nothing more to say. Let's go on to the next one. In at number 16, we have Vince Schneider. Now, Vince... Uh, wrong place, wrong time, buddy. Wrong place, wrong time. Um, there's not a great deal to say about Vince's kill. The reason, though, why I've ranked him as high as I have is the kill is very quick and very clean, but you get the gore. You get the blood. Um, not enough kills up to this point have had um, a great deal of blood and i feel like with a horror film you need the blood and there's far more blood in this than there has been in a number of the kills that we've already discussed and that is it that is it that is the reason why vince is as high as he is um vince uh places himself at the bar um has an argument with uh all the kids and it just happens to ghostface just happens to be in the area you know, I mean, Vince is a targeted kill because of um, relations, um, you know, who he's related to. But for um, the kill to rank as high as it has, it is purely because of the uh, amount of blood involved. Uh, you need a decent amount of blood in a kill to make it a great kill. Um, 
this is mid range. It's not a great kill. It's not a terrible kill. Um, it's just a very quick stab in the neck, but there's plenty of blood, and that is the reason why Vince gets rated so high on this list. And um, there's nothing more to say really about Vince. Um, you can't help who you're related to, I guess. It was a simple game, Cotton. He should have told me where Sydney was. Now you lose. Oh, I love that line. One of my favourite lines from the entire franchise. It's simple, but effective. Cotton Weary. What a terrible time you've had of it, my friend. You get accused of murdering Maureen Prescott. You spend a year in prison for something you didn't do. You finally get out of prison. Things start go. You know, you're surrounded by another massacre. Um, you get accused again, very briefly, by Gale. Um... You then just, uh, you know, you start to turn your life around. You get your life on track. You get yourself a girlfriend. You got yourself a talk show. You got yourself a big house. Life's going great. But because you knew Sydney and because you had a connection to Sydney, not you weren't friends with Sydney. You just happened to know Sydney. And that is the reason why you had to die. Because Ghostface believed that you knew where Sydney was. I don't know why Ghostface would think that Cotton and Sydney would stay in contact and why Cotton and Sydney would become friends um, for Cotton to even know where Sydney is. But it's a uh, short straw, buddy. Short straw. And for that reason, you are mid range kill. But it's the line. I love the line. The line is. I mean, Cotton is another one like Jane Randall. You get a build up. Cotton fights for his life, but ultimately gets killed, but it's off-screen. The final blow is off-screen. It's very similar to the Jenny Randall kill in that respect. It only ranks as high as it does because I love that line. It was a simple game, Cotton. You should have told me where Sydney was. Now, you lose. Great line. And now, Cotton, in this game, you rank at number 15. Kenny, I feel sorry for you, buddy. I do. You seem like a great guy. Um, it's just unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Like You spend so much time being abused by Gail. Verbally abused by Gail. Uh, you try to do the right thing to save Randy. But you make a realisation and it's too late. What? 30 second delay. reason why you rank as high as you do on this list is because of uh, what is the jump scare element of this kill. Um, we know there's a 30 second delay on what Kenny can see from his news van. But when Kenny realises that, Ghostface could be anywhere at this point. And that's what makes this kill so effective. And it's the quickness of the kill. And there's plenty of blood. I said it on a previous kill. There's The, the blood is needed for some of these great kills. And we get plenty of it from this kill. Uh, Kenny gets caught off guard. You get the jump scare. You get the blood. It's the, the key things that I think you need in a horror movie for a kill. Especially in a slasher. Like Scream. And it, it works. This kill just works for me. And Kenny the cameraman is an enjoyable character. Um, you've got to feel sorry for him because of all the abuse he takes from Gale. But he tries to do the right thing. And he pays the price. And granted, I, I should have read your book before I took this job, but I'm reading it now, and woo, I, I read what happened to your last cameraman. The guy got gutted. Now me, I'm gonna do what any rational human being would do, which is get the fuck out of here. First of all, he wasn't gutted. I made that up. His throat was slashed. Yo, gutted, slashed, the guy ain't in the union no more. So, sorry Kenny. Uh, it's not worked out for you, but you have ranked yourself relatively high on the list. Uh, you didn't quite make the top 10, but we are getting close to it. So you've done well. You've done well to rank as high as you have. And Ghostface, good kill. I, I, I enjoyed it. I appreciated your kill on this one. So uh, let's move on. Coming in at number 13, we have Rebecca Walters. Now, Rebecca, 
you get fired by Sydney. You're her publicist. Um, you're helping with her book tour. And because of that, you have to go. You do. You have to go. You're connected with Sydney. Anyone connected with Sydney dies. Um, except for one person. One person up to this point connected with Sydney. Actually, no, two. I'll say two. Um, to my knowledge, her father's still alive. Um, and Gail. And then... Okay, there's more than two. Ignore that. Um, I'm thinking of more and more people as I'm going along that are connected with Sydney that are still alive. So we won't go into that too much further, but we'll focus on the kill, which is what we're here for. And uh, with Rebecca, she makes a foolish error. She gets the phone call from Ghostface and she has the opportunity to go back into the hospital, but she chooses to go and get in her car. Uh, the hospital would be full of people. Um, well, I say that. You'd think the hospital was full of people. As we see in Screen 5, the hospital is not full of people. The hospital is deserted. However, you'd feel like she'd have a better chance if she went back into the hospital of surviving. And I'm going to say that she ranks as high as she does because of the uh, the, the way that Ghostface delivers the kill. Um, Rebecca tries to run for her life. Ghostface runs at top speed into her, plunging that knife in there. Um, you know that's going to hurt. Someone running at you at that speed with a knife out goes straight into your, into your midsection. Oh, that's going to hurt. But it's what follows. Now, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure on this kill. Um, you guys can maybe uh, enlighten me in the comments. Is she dead at this point? I don't know. If she is... This kill is getting ranked lower. If she isn't, this kill is where it belongs. Because not only has she just been stabbed, and it's a very painful stabbing. She's under control. <laughs> but what follows being thrown off the top of that car park. But the scream is what confuses me. So is the scream coming from Rebecca or is it coming from the reporters down below? I'm not too sure. However, if it's coming from Rebecca, that's why the kill is where it is. Because not only has she just been stabbed, but then she's been thrown off the top of a building. And she crashes into the top of that news van and then she's gone. She's dead. That's what finishes her off. That's to my knowledge. If you guys believe she died in the car park that could change everything that could move some people around this list um it'll move a, a, a bunch of people up anyway at least one place because rebecca would drop down because of it however to my knowledge she dies when she gets thrown off the top of the building and crashes into the news van that's why she's as high as she is on the list and uh let's move into number 12 oh cc you should have just gone to the party. There's no reason why you couldn't have been at that party and stayed sober. And then if anybody did need a ride home, you'd have been there in half the time to give them that ride because you wouldn't have had to drive there. So you should have just gone to the party and you'd still be alive. This one is all about the chase. Uh, CC puts up a fight. She does. Um, she tries to put obstacles in the way of Ghostface as she runs up the stairs. She makes a mistake of running up the stairs, but it's a horror movie. How often do we see that? When don't people make that run up the stairs? So, Cece, the reason why you're as high as you are is because I feel like it's being thrown off the building. We just did this with Rebecca a moment ago. Being thrown off the building... We know that's what kills you because we hear you scream as you get thrown off the balcony. And it's that fall. <clears throat> you know, she's already been attacked upstairs, but then she gets thrown off the balcony and just splat on the floor. Um, it's Again, it's not Ghostface's usual MO. Ghostface, we know, is famous for his knife attacks. Um, that's his preferred weapon. However, I just feel like something about being thrown off a building just adds a little bit of spice. So that's why you're not right up near the top. 
but you have got yourself very close to the top 10 uh, in what I'd say is a fairly decent kill. Um, I, I couldn't find any reason to not rate this kill as high as I have. So, CC Cooper, you are number 12. Let's get into number 11. We're getting close to that top 10. Fuck you, Amber. I'm not the fucking killer. I know. Now, this one is very different because it's part of a Ghostface reveal. Now, we had it with Derek much earlier where Ghostface was Mickey, revealed himself and proceeded to shoot Derek in the chest. Uh, but there was a lot of uh, dialogue in between the reveal and the gunshot. This one is very sudden. Liv pleads her innocence and Amber responds. And because it's so out of nowhere, I mean, you may or may not have predicted Amber as one of the Ghostface killers in Scream 5. However... You cannot tell me you predicted that she was going to shoot Liv in the head at that part to do the reveal. It was just bang. Out of nowhere. Literally bang. The gunshot. She painted the walls with her head. It's just so sudden. And that's why it's number 11. Because it's one of the better Ghostface reveals. Because it's very much with Ghostface reveals. Talk, talk, talk. And everyone from that point generally gets away except for the Ghostface killers. For this reveal... Um, it's very much live. You're gone. Let's kill some more people. Um, yeah, it's this. The element of the reveal is what I'm putting uh, this so high for because it's just so sudden. You don't see the gunshot coming from Amber. Um, it's like Amber's bored of playing Ghostface. She just wants people to know it's her at this point. Uh, they say, uh, I say they. I'll be more precise. Amber and Richie say that the uh, the whole point was to frame Sam. So they don't want to be caught. But I feel like Amber just gets bored of playing Ghostface here. Um, and she just pulls out the gun and shoots Liv in the head. And that's it for Liv. So for me, it's a great kill. It is. Um, you may disagree. And if you do, I'd be interested to know. Um, so we've, we've worked our way from 37 up to 11. We're about to go into the top 10. So if you do have any comments on any of the kills so far, please let me know. I'd be interested to discuss them further with you. And maybe you could influence uh, the new list because there will be a new list uh, coming after Scream 6 because, you know, we've got more kills to add to the list. Um, I can't tell you when that'll be just yet. I'm not too sure, but that will be a thing that will be coming to the channel. And we've got the top 10 to get into now. So let's dive in with number 10. So coming in at number 10, we have Phil Stevens. Now, Phil, you die because of what your surname is. Um, that can't be helped by you. But what can be helped is you put in your head against the wall of the stall in the toilet. Like, why? Why would you do that? I know you're hearing funny noises, but why would you put your head up against it to try and hear them closer? I don't understand that bit. However, the rest of the surrounding of the kill... Um, Obviously, it's Ghostface trying to lure Phil into that position. Um, the the strength it's got to take to get that knife to go through that wall and into his head is, is crazy. But the fact that he gets stabbed in the ear and into the head is what puts this kill where it does. Um, Ghostface, we know, loves the knife as his primary weapon. So the fact that this is a knife kill is great. But also... It's a stab to the head. You know, it's... For me, again, it's got a comedy aspect to it. Um, I'm sure it does for many of you. But the reason why it's not ranked lower with some of the other comedy kills is because it is a knife to the head. I just feel like it deserved to be a top 10. Um, I couldn't justify rate, rating it any higher, unfortunately. Uh, it's just, it's a good kill. It really is a good kill. But I couldn't justify rating it any higher because the nine that are to follow, in my opinion, are just far superior. Now, they have their flaws, a couple of them. They do. Um, maybe I could have flipped this one with what we've got in at number nine. But I'll explain why when we get into it. 
Uh, but for now, Phil Stevens uh, gets number 10 just because it is a stab to the head. And you ain't surviving that. You're not. Um, I mean, if you get emergency attention, medical attention immediately, um, maybe you might have a chance. Uh, but there was no way you were surviving that. It was straight through the ear, into the brain. Um, that's it for you, Phil Stevens, I'm afraid. But lucky for you, you rank at number 10. Now coming in at number nine, we have Phil Stevens' girlfriend, Maureen Evans. Now, Maureen, the reason why you're at number nine is because you're killed in public. And, you know, you're in a room full of people. Uh, they see you getting killed and they do nothing about it. Uh, for me, the reason you're not higher, because I love the fact that it's in public, the reason you're not higher is because of the scream. And you know the scream I'm talking about. This one. I don't get it. I don't get the scream. The scream just feels so fake. But the fact that it's in public. Um, Ghostface has just finished killing Phil. He steals his jacket and he goes to sit and watch the movie with Maureen. That's that's just that's good. That's great. That's funny. You know, um, the fact that he has the audacity to take his jacket and pretend to be him wearing the Ghostface mask. And then Maureen makes that realisation that it's not Phil when she finds Phil's blood all over the jacket. But by then it's too late. Ghostface delivers that blow. And Maureen just... You you fall into your death because, again, of your name. You and Phil both just got really unfortunate with when you were named. However, the fact that it's in public is what rates this so high. It makes it a great kill. Love it, um, apart from the scream. And I know the movie's called Scream. However, the, the scream that she does when she dies is unnecessary. That's the only reason she wasn't rated higher. But congratulations, Maureen Evans. You rank in at number nine. Coming in at number eight, Wes Hicks. Now, Wes is known for, uh, among his friends, um, being a victim of an overprotective mother. Uh, she makes him carry around a taser, a mace to protect himself. Uh, they mock him for it. But it turns out, in the end, he needed it. Uh, unfortunately, Wes, you just... You, you had to go because your mother was the sheriff. And because your mother became a target, you became a target. And I feel like... And, and obviously your connection with uh, some of the main characters, like Tara. Um... But you had to go. And I feel like the method of this kill delivers so well. It's it's that moment of the struggle. Um there's no chase, there's there's the the, the build up with the, the false jump scares, but there's no chase. And it's the moment when that knife comes towards him and he tries to fight it off, but he's just not powerful enough. Ghostface overpowers him and when the knife goes in, it's the effect of, you know, the knife slowly going in his neck and out the other side. It's, this, this, you know, there's plenty of blood. Um, it just delivers on all fronts for me. But, again, there's better kills, so that's why it's not higher. So that's why I've unfortunately had to rank it at number eight. But for me, it's an all-round great kill. And I don't feel like I'm doing it any misservice by ranking it where I have. Um, it d definitely doesn't deserve to be any lower. Uh, it's just unfortunate that, for me, there are better kills. So, uh, Wes Hicks at number eight. Number seven, we have Tatum Riley. Now, we briefly pushed on Tatum earlier when we were talking about Jenny Randall trying to escape through the garage door and Ghostface used it against her. Again, we have the garage door in play, but this was the original, you know. Um, Tatum... Playing around with Ghostface, believing it to be a prank. Um, unfortunately, Tatum, you didn't make the sequel. 
Um, Ghostface dispatched of you in a very swift manner. Uh, very effective, though. Uh, the fact that she tries to escape through the, the cat door on the garage and she gets stuck because Ghostface raises that garage door. And it's the actual kill itself for me on this one. She puts up a great fight. She does. And that's another reason why she's rated as high as she is. Because she puts up a great fight. Ghostface keeps stumbling over. You know, he tries to get her. He falls. He gets beer bottles to the face. Tatum does everything she can to try and hold on and survive. But when she's trapped in that door and she can't get out, she's just going up and up and up. And it's the net break. The net break is so effective. Um... Her neck just snaps because of the position she's in. She can't do anything to stop it. She's going up and up and up. And then she gets to that position where her neck just snaps. And that's it. She's dead. And I love that kill. The, the method of the kill, the neck snap, is just great. It's such a good kill. Um, again, I don't feel like I've done it any misservice by not ranking it higher. I feel like it's perfectly placed. And that's, that's it. <laughs> Coming in at number six, we have Deputy Perkins. Um, again, it's a head stab. I said it on Phil Stevens at number 10. It can't be a head stab. You know, you get stabbed in the head, but this one's just so much better because of the comedy surrounding it. Um, I've done it before on this list. I've rated something higher than other stuff that's similar because of the comedy. But this one, Ghostface has just dealt with Deputy Hoss. We spoke about this earlier when we talked about Deputy Hoss. The kill that followed was so much better. It's that much better that it comes in at number six. And Deputy Hoss gets killed. Perkins just gets stabbed right in the head. Right there. Straight through the face. And it's just, oh, it's so funny. It's just the reactions of Ghostface. He pulls the knife out and just, bang, straight in the face. It's just, it's so comical. Um, and then that's followed up with uh, some further comedy from Deputy Perkins. As he gets out of the car, he's got blood dribbling down his face. And like I said, a lot of blood makes a great kill. Uh, he's got all this blood dribbling down his face. He swings a few punches. Um misses because he can't see um maybe comes across a bit cartoonish but drops to his knees and delivers this amazing line Fuck Bruce Willis. and now we come into number five olivia morris now olivia gets in at number five purely because of off-screen elements i've talked about off-screen elements previously on this list and i just feel like with olivia everything else is there you get the attack the initial attack is there you get everything else surrounding the kill but the final blows and the fatal blows are not visible you know we don't see them and after she gets a head smash through the window Ghostface obviously hides after leaving Olivia on the bed, uh, on the bed, and her guts, uh, her insides are on the outside. We don't see that in the kill, but the visual of that after the kill is what rates this so high. It's such a great attack, and the walls covered in blood. Again, there's plenty of blood. Makes a great kill, but it's the fact that Ghostface has done all this damage in such a short space of time. And the visual of her insides on the outside on the bed when Sydney walks in the room just deliver for me on this one. So, for that reason, Olivia Morris, you come in at number five, a strong number five. And again, I'm so happy to place you there because it is such a good kill. The only reason this is not top three, I would go as far as to say this could have made top three if we'd have seen more. If we'd have seen more of the kill, I would happily place this top three. But we don't see enough of the kill. So for that reason, you drop a couple of places down to number five. But still very respectable. And you earn it. Well, Ghostface earns it. But 
Um, yeah, Olivia, number five. Out of the car, you fucker! <laughs> Officer Richards, you are unfortunate. You should have fired the gun. You don't, like, you told him to, you told him to freeze. And he drove the car into you. I mean, Ghostface had an ultimate weapon at his disposable in a car. You know, you were pointing the gun at him. You should have just shot him. Look at all the people he's killed already. Why wouldn't you just shoot him straight away? But you didn't. And then this happened to you. And as gnarly as that is, that is why you are as high rated on this list. Because you had a pipe through the head and you're still twitching afterwards. You're still twitching. And that's what makes this so good. Um, yeah, it's it's so effective. Like The pipe has gone straight through his head. And the fact that he's still twitching on the last time we see a close-up of him, it just adds to the kill. And it makes it a phenomenal kill. Perfectly placed at number four. It's just, it's so good. Um, we don't see that much of him. Otherwise in the film, he's sort of lingering in the background. But it's just, the, the kill, it's it's a kill you would expect to see for a, a much more important character. You know, I'd rather see this kind of a kill on Randy. I mean, the scenario would have to be different because he wouldn't be pointing a gun at Ghostface. Um, but a character like Randy is ranked so low when a nothing character like... Officer Andrews is ranked so high. Uh, Officer Richards is ranked so high. Um, yeah, it's just... For me, it's it's well placed. But I just feel like it was a wasted kill on a nothing character. And for that reason, it dropped down to four. It might have been higher if it was a more prestigious character. I'm trying not to take the, uh, the prestige of the character into account with this. But for that reason, and that reason only, it's not top three. Um, but the top three are, I'm sure you'll agree, well worthy of their positions. Um, you might probably disagree on the order. I'm not too sure, but let's get into it. We're now, finally, into the top three. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. If you hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish, understand? Coming in at number three, we have Casey Becker. Now, Casey's uh, boyfriend, Steve, as we discussed earlier in the video, died um, because she got the quiz question wrong with Ghostface. She played the game and she lost. And for that reason, Steve lost his life. And now it's Casey's turn. And this changed horror, I feel, for a lot of people. Um... The poster girl, um, the, the person that everyone thought was going to be the main character in Drew Barrymore, died in the opening scene. And that's phenomenal. But it's not just that, it's the, the build-up to the kill. Ghostface slowly losing his temper. All the scenes that build you up to it and build you up to it. They play the game, she loses the game, you get the chase scene, you get plenty of blood, plenty of gore. Ghostface delivers that fi final fatal blow. Um, well, it's not even that. He delivers a few blows. Uh, whilst he's dragging her away, she's still alive. She's holding on to the phone. She's still alive. And that final shot we see of her. Hanging from the tree with her insides on the outside. Phenomenal kill. Until Screams 4 and 5 was my number one. Absolutely my number one until Screams 4 and 5. Which is a bit of a hint, possibly, as to where we're going with the last two. You've probably figured one of them out already. Um, if you haven't figured them both out, you, if you're a diehard Scream fan, you will have figured them both out. Because you'll have done the numbers. Uh, you'll have looked at the names we've covered and you'll realise who's left. But it's just such a great kill. 
it is such a great kill and there's so many scenes around it um and the only thing that does it justice is watching the film it really is so if you haven't seen it go and watch it right now that's not uh, you know i'm serious these these screen movies are so good that kill is right at the start of screen one you've got to go and see it now um yeah it's phenomenal absolutely amazing kill and like i say it was previously number one on my list but because of Scream 4, um, not even Scream 4, it's just Scream 5. What am I talking about? Scream 4 has nothing to do with it. Scream 5 took the top two spaces. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm talking about Scream 4. It's all about Scream 5 taking them top two places. Casey Becker was number one until Scream 5 came along. Ignore me. I'm talking nonsense, as I always do. But let's get in to the top two. Coming in at number two, Dewey, you made it so far. You had so many near-death experiences. Ghostface kept getting you time after time. How many times have you been stabbed, did you say, Dewey? I've been stabbed nine times. Nine times? The man has been stabbed nine times. And he kept coming back, and he's such a great character. He is one of the best characters. He's one of the power three Sydney Gale Dewey, everybody loves to see them, and Dewey finally met his end, and I feel like it was a kill befitting of the character. Yes, today. It's a shame Dewey had to go because we all love formerly known as Deputy Dewey, formerly known as Sheriff Dewey. Now he's just regular old Dewey. But he's been through so much and the kill. This is a prime example of what I was talking about with Randy. The kill fits the character. It's such a good kill. Going with the character, it just belongs. And Ghostface said it. It's an honour. Um, I couldn't. I, 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 I am one of these people who won't go to a film having watched trailers, learning information about it. I know nothing about these films before I go and see them, so everything is from fresh eyes. I have no expectations. I didn't expect any of the main three to die, as always, because they made it so far, and then Dewey died, and I couldn't believe it. But it was such a good kill. Um. My understanding is there's some people who are speculating that Dewey might not be dead. I think that's nonsense. Dewey, no way is he surviving that. Yeah, he survived all the others, but there's just way more to it. You've got the blood, which I keep saying makes a great kill. Um, it's just, this kill is only not number one because of what surround, like, like the setting, I suppose, is the best way to phrase it. The setting for the top kill. Um, is the only reason this isn't number one. Otherwise, I would have gladly placed it at number one. Um, and Dewey deserves to be at number one. But, as I said with Randy, I'm not basing this on character. I'm basing it on kill. And I've got to, uh, unfortunately, put Dewey in at number two. Which brings us in to, in my opinion, the best kill in the entire Scream franchise from movies one through five. Sheriff Hicks. Hello, Sheriff Judy. What's your favorite scary movie? I prefer animated films and musicals. Sheriff Judy Hicks, formerly Deputy Judy Hicks. I thought you were a killer in Scream 4. I did. You were one of my suspects. Um, with good reason, I felt. And now you find yourself top of the list for the best kills that Ghostface has ever done. Ever. Um, what a prestigious place to be. 37 people have fallen victim to Ghostface and Judy Hicks gets herself in at the top. And the reason for it is 
the fact that this kill is done outside in the middle of the street in broad daylight. Maureen Evans was killed in a room full of people. I was saying when we discussed her kill that I feel like she should have been uh, potentially ranked higher. This is the reason why she let herself down with a scream in that one, but we've already talked about that. Let's focus on Judy. With Judy, she just gets killed in the middle of the street, and it's not a simple kill. Ghostface steps out and stabs her. But then Ghostface goes crazy on her. It's stab after stab after stab after stab. It's so gruesome, but it's so effective. And I love the kill. It is my absolute favorite kill. Like I say, Scream 5 absolutely knocked Casey Becker off the top spot with those two last, last two kills just because of how good they were. And full credit to the Ghostface killer that I believe to be responsible for both kills, uh, Amber. You know, she's uh, confirmed as Dewey's killer uh, in the final scene of the film. I believe her to be the one that killed um, Deputy Judy or Sheriff Judy um, because of the, the kill style. Uh, some people may agree, some may disagree uh, on who did that kill, but I believe it to be Amber. So full credit to Amber. She's landed the top two kills on the list. So, you know, maybe we can do a ghost face uh, killers list you know ranked from worst to best um and we can see where everyone fits uh amber's got to get bonus points surely for having the top two kills on my kills list um but there's more you know there's so many different lists we can do to do with this franchise so if you want to see any more on this franchise or maybe you want to see me do this for a different franchise let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video you know what to do and i'll see you next time